Don't get me wrong, this kind of behavior goes way further than me giving Soul Bunny three dollars to subscribe to Patreon in order to access a hate piece that she planned to put out about me. To them, that was crossing the line, but when they do it to me, it's fair game. So, if you are unaware of what happened, the Discord was leaked. And look, it's technically a public Discord, it's just paywalled. Like, you have to be either a KGG sub or like subbed to Patreon in order to get in. But there was someone who subbed to Twitch, uh, leaked a bunch of screenshots, got banned, and then subbed using the same name to Patreon to try to get in again. And they started a whole bunch of drama online. And I wanted to address it. So you all, you're all familiar with Rosalind at this point. It was one of her followers that did the weird subscribing to get into the Discord thing. She was given some screenshots from the Discord. And as a result, Noodlegate is going to make it into 2024. It's gonna be the longest internet drama of all time. So here's what she leaked. She leaked the list of uh, channels because the fact that there's a Tasty Noodles channel is apparently really bad. That's really, really bad. We should not have a channel to post our Tasty Noodles. But the serious thing that I wanted to discuss is this. This is what got leaked. So the tweet in question says, Secondhand screenshots, but K -K -K Keffel's Discord clan is calling her the Grand Dragon of Noodles with uh, white hoods. And someone from our Discord put a Wiggler sticker on a cup of noodles, and they made a paper hat, and they wrote Grand Noodle Dragon K -K -K Keffel's. Lots and lots of quote tweets. So this person said, ain't this like an alt-right thing too on top of this? Apparently Pepe is... Alt-right? Okay. It's obviously not, but it's really funny that that's the argument. I actually do want to have a serious conversation about this. However, before I have a serious conversation about this, I want to go over the stuff. I'm sorry that I'm like taking a lighthearted approach to this, because I don't actually approve of what the person in this Discord is doing. I just think that the reaction to this is also kind of... it's overblown. I want to have an honest conversation about this, and I want to talk about edgy humor. Because I think there's a place, especially on the left and in progressive spaces, for edgy humor. But I think there's a line. I think it crossed that line. The point of the person in the Discord who made that was that the accusations of me being a white supremacist because I tweeted noodles are tasty is so ridiculous that they intentionally played up how racist I am in order to turn it into a joke. However, I don't think that that's really funny. I'm not going to ban them, but I think that we need to have a conversation about it. Because what that person did was take what is a chibi image of me, that's what the Wiggler is, it, it's designed to look like me, and then put a clan hat on me. I don't think that's okay. I really don't. You all know me, and a lot of people here are also from VGG. And a, there are a lot of people in progressive spaces, especially who do not like me because I am kind of edgy. I managed to piss off a huge portion of the online left just by saying retard. And while I don't say it as often as I used to, I don't actually take it back or feel bad about saying it. And I guess like what I want to say about this is that it's okay to be edgy. It's okay to be subversive. And I never want to purity test people. I never want people in this community to feel like they have to walk on eggshells. But I think you need to realize when you are crossing the line. Because th that kind of humor is basically the same kind of irony poisoning that you see on the far right. Putting a clan hat on a chibi drawing of me as, as, like a, as a joke to say, oh, this is so ridiculous, obviously you're not racist. If it was a swastika, it would be too far. And the clan hood is a similar vibe. I feel like this would be like trying to prove you're not racist by doing blackface. Like, 
oh yeah, I'm so anti-racist that it's such a joke to call me a racist that I'm going to do blackface to prove that I'm not racist, you know? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Edgy humor is okay up until it starts becoming the avenue for masking genuine beliefs someone holds. Even if you don't hold those beliefs, if you can't, within reasonable doubt, identify if someone is genu genuinely believes it, the edgy humor has probably gone too far. Absolutely. Rosalind gets mad because she's making the claim that me saying noodles are tasty is an anti-Asian dog whistle. And it's not. I have quite a bit of respect for Asian people. I've spent a lot of time in Asia. I have friends that are Korean. I have friends that are Filipino and Chinese. And I would never intentionally engage in that kind of behavior. The only reason that it became a community in-joke in the first place was because of the accusations against me. So like that said, it's okay to laugh at it. It's okay to make jokes about the noodle thing. I'm very genuine with what I believe. I don't like to hide my beliefs and I will never hide what I believe in because I think that that's cowardly. And I don't think that this chatter, if, if you're in chat, if you end up watching this, the person who made that, I'm pretty sure that you're not racist either and that this was a stupid joke. And I also think that. But I think that this really warranted a discussion about edgy humor in general. It's funny to be subversive. It's funny to push the boundaries because if we weren't allowed to do that, comedy wouldn't exist. The best comedy out there is always comedy that pushes the boundaries of what is socially acceptable. And that's fine, but we don't want it to descend into irony poisoning where people are using these kinds of jokes in order to mask genuinely hateful beliefs. Racism isn't okay in this community. And if anyone here is found to genuinely be expressing racist views, they're going to get kicked out of this community. They will be banned on all my platforms because that's not acceptable. That's really the crux of it. It's okay to push the boundaries of what's socially acceptable. Subversive humor is funny. I think it's okay, even in KGG chat, to say tranny or faggot or retard, as long as people aren't using edgy humor as a way to mask hateful beliefs. There's a difference between being edgy and using irony as a mask. And using irony as a mask is something that you'll see on the far right. And it's something that we should not tolerate in our spaces. I'm not like the people who are calling this out. I don't want to create an environment where people feel like they're constantly being purity tested and that they're going to be exiled unless they meet some arbitrary standard. Like, I think also you need to remember the Discord, the Catboy Ranch Discord, is not a private Discord. There's a lot of people who genuinely hate me, hate this community, hate everyone who is a part of this community, and will literally give me money in order to get in, to take screenshots, in order to paint everyone here as a white supremacist. It's important to remember that. It sucks, but it is important to remember. It is super weird. Don't get me wrong. This kind of behavior goes way further than me giving Soul Bunny $3 to subscribe to Patreon in order to access a hate piece that she planned to put out about me. To them, that was crossing the line, but when they do it to me, it's fair game. We can't pretend that they actually have principles or moral standards. None of the people who make these criticisms of me, they're not part of the community. They don't care. I don't even engage with them, except for on stream when I'm doing commentary on these issues. I never understood the hate watching dynamic. Critical of the people I watch, but I don't know how people can enjoy their time watching people they don't like. When people talk about parasociality, they're often only focusing on positive parasociality. But there's the flip side of that. There are people who have parasocial attachments to creators they don't like, where they cannot stop talking about them. They hate watch their content in order to shit talk them further. It's actually incredibly common. This feels like drama for the sake of drama. I mean, to Rosalind, this was drama for the sake of drama. But I wanted to use this moment to talk about the place of edgy humor in the community. While I think it's okay to be edgy, as I've said, I think that there is a line 
and we cannot cross that line. If we want to say we're leftists, I don't think that we should engage in the same kind of behavior people on the far right do in order to hide their power level. But look, look, I'm not having this conversation in order to, in order to deflect and say, look at these people. These people are pieces of shit. Therefore, we don't need to think about our own actions as a community. I think that we should still have this conversation regardless of the fact that they are pieces of shit, which we all know. I've been at content creation for a while and I've never seen this community be as active as it's been. Even when I had an incredible amount of press attention, the community feels a lot more active now than it did then. And I don't want to be the kind of streamer who just lets stuff slide and doesn't actually make any comment about it because I think that would be encouraging that kind of behavior to develop. And I don't want that kind of behavior to develop. It's not a matter of edgy humor. Just put some thought into your presentation. It could be easily mistaken for sincere. Just that. See, I don't believe that, Windleby. Things that I've said that were obviously jokes, time and time again, have been taken as sincere. Like, this is a common thing that you see over and over again on social media. But not just me, like, with tons and tons of people. If you already have a reason to dislike someone, you're not going to take them in good faith in the first instance. But also, I'm not having this conversation because I want to address my haters. I'm having this conversation to address all of you and have an earnest conversation about the place that edginess has in our community. And I don't think that this is a bigoted community, far from it. There's no way for someone like me to cultivate a kind of community that a far right person would have, despite what my detractors would say about me. But I just don't want us to fall into this kind of trap. Keep in mind when you're making edgy jokes, anything that you say publicly, because the Discord's a public place, can and will be used against you and can and will be used against the community too. Yeah, think about who you could potentially be hurting, to be honest, because if these kind of jokes continue, it does a disservice to my image because people start saying, oh, Keffel's community is an incredibly racist community and word of mouth and the game of telephone happens and suddenly this is the opinion that dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people who don't know anything about me or this community will start to believe. We do some great things in this community. We have a support group in this community. And that's not something that a lot of, I don't know another streamer who has someone running a support group for their community. And that's the kind of thing that a lot of people could really benefit from who will never access simply on the basis of the lies that are spread about me. And I just wanna make sure that we avoid this pitfall. As any saying, People are going to say this kind of stuff anyway. People are going to say all sorts of terrible things about both me and anyone who says they're a part of this community because this ship has sailed already and the game of telephone has been going for over a year. You're handling this very well. I was curious to see your response because honestly, I found that image to be uncomfortable. I think almost anyone who's serious about the things we believe in would find it to cross the line. Even though it was likely done in good faith without bad intentions, it was a bit much. People should be aware that anything you say or do online is public record and anything anyone says or does around you will be used to reflect on you. Someone will save and use it against you unless you're ready to publicly defend it. Don't do or say it and think about how that defense would have to play out. I completely agree. I completely agree with what you're saying. Like it made me uncomfortable, but I didn't address it because when I don't know a chatter very well, I, and I know there's a lot of people in this community who have anxiety issues. Like I've addressed like a chatter who I've only seen chat a couple times before and they've had like anxiety attacks because like the idea of like having attention drawn to you when there are like hundreds of eyes on you, it's too much for them. So I just ignored it. I didn't want to say, don't do this because I didn't want to light them up over something that was really stupid. And I really hope that if they see this, they're not like, oh shit, oh shit, I'm in big trouble. When really I just wanted to turn this moment into a conversation 
Yeah, the, no, no. The human brain isn't wired for that kind of attention. Uh, as I said earlier, like, I got a new psychiatrist, finally, here in Ireland. And while I was here and, like, talking to him, he was talking about, you can't downplay how much harassment affects your mental health. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone in this community. So I try to be very careful with what I say about chatters. To be frank, we all thought the joke was pretty far. I even said Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, in the screenshot, Annie, you even said Jesus fucking Christ. And, and this is another issue. There's a difference between interpersonal bigotry, like interpersonal racism, interpersonal transphobia, and systemic racism, systemic transphobia, other forms of bigotry. And often these things get conflated. Someone could do something bigoted on an interpersonal level. They could say something kind of fucked up without realizing it. Without being someone who advocates for the systemic harm of that entire minority group. And I don't think that anyone who is a progress, especially like progressives, I don't think anyone is immune from engaging in some sort of interpersonal bigotry that they might not even be aware that they're engaging in. But that doesn't mean that they agree with people who are very intentionally and willfully trying to engage in systematic harm against minorities. And I think that that's a distinction that needs to be made more often because pretty much all the time I see these accusations come out, no one makes that kind of distinction. I'm very old compared to people here, so I don't chat, but I just want to say I found lurking around here once in a while very healing after having gone through the Shakesville cult-like blog years ago. This conversation is so thoughtful and mature compared to the purity testing and outright abuse cultivated in a lot of the places on the left. I mean, community means a lot to me, and I think the only way to actually cultivate a meaningful community is to have these kinds of conversations. And to make people feel like they can be part of that conversation and to feel like they don't have to step on eggshells around other people. Because for me, one of the issues that I have had in so many leftist spaces was this constant feeling that I am stepping on eggshells because people will try and destroy your reputation at the slightest provocation, whether it's based on real or imagined things that you did. I guess, like, the last thing I want to talk about, like, when we're making this distinction between irony poisoning and edgy humor, I'm going to talk about the word retard, since that was a big point of contention for me in the last year. I started saying it when I moved from Twitch to YouTube, and people took notice and got really mad. They started saying that I was ableist, that I hate disabled people, even though I myself am disabled. I live under the poverty line on disability for several years. So it's, it's kind of funny to me that this ended up getting used as an accusation against me, most likely from people who were in a much more privileged position than I was for the majority of my 20s. I am digressing from the point. The reason that I thought retard was funny is because it's transgressive, but at the same time, I'm not saying it to express any form of bigotry. You can make the argument, oh, this word has been used in the past to describe um, neurodivergent people in a negative way, in, in an institutionalized setting, but so has dumb, so has stupid, so has lame. And if we're going to just say, oh, this word is off limits because of the historical connotation, why is it that all the other words that mean the exact same thing are not off limits? So I like that because it was transgressive. It wasn't expressing any form of bigotry. At the same time, I did stop saying it as much because if you say it all the time, it kind of loses its punch. Like it's kind of funny when you drop it every now and then if you don't say the word very often. But if it becomes a regular part of your vocabulary, it just starts to lose meaning. It's like when um, people used to say the word gay to mean something negative and people would just describe everything as gay. You'd wake up and your mom would be like, I, I, got, I, I got frosted flakes, Timothy, come to breakfast. No, mom, frosted flakes are gay. You know, it just like doesn't mean anything if you just like use it all the fucking time for everything. So I think like saying retard, for instance, is an example of something that's edgy 
that isn't irony poisoning. And it's irony poisoning that is something that often gets labeled as edgy, but it's not actually edgy. It's just using irony to mask your beliefs. Kevils, you currently live on an island where the word hun can be used as short for honey or an offensive slur for a Protestant. Words have different meanings. To oh yeah, no, no, that's actually true. I had to take the word hun out of my vocabulary because where I currently l live, hun is a slur. I am not joking. I learned this the hard way. <laughs> Kevils, is because in the DSM-4, mental retardation was a mental diagnostic term used to dehumanize people with autism and Down syndrome until it was changed to intellectual disability in the DSM-5? Like, I'm familiar with the historical context there. It doesn't change the fact that there are a whole bunch of other words currently used in our day-to-day -day vocabularies that were also medicalized and used as ways to other people with intellectual disabilities or other disabilities like not being able to speak or hear. And before I end up like pissing off the deaf community, I'm sorry, I just referred to being deaf as a disability. This is an entirely other can of worms unrelated to this discussion. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, it's, it's a really hard, it's a really hard topic. I don't know if anyone here has spent a lot of time around the deaf community. But um, there's a lot of deaf people. People generally hold these kinds of beliefs who were born deaf and went to deaf schools and learned sign language as their first language, that being deaf is not a disability and that being deaf itself is a cultural group. And it's like they're very against things like putting cochlear implants into children who are deaf because they see it as trying to fix something that isn't wrong. Now, as someone who is not deaf, I don't really want to step into the ring on this discussion. I have no stake in this. I just hope that deaf people live their best lives. What are they going to do? Angrily do Naruto? Okay, so on that topic, uh, this is years back. I was in a gay bar in Toronto and there was two deaf people and they were pissed at each other. And they were in like a full-on yelling match. But they were yelling in sign language. So, you know, like the Dragon Ball Z fighting scenes? It was kind of like that. Like, it was like, they were like going at it. It fucking ruled. It looked intense. I had no idea what was going on. I would rather people say we're and mean dumb than people say on the spectrum and gifted. I would rather people call me a tra- then call me brave. I honestly, 100% of the time, you're a brave Keffels, thank you. I think we've covered this topic, but I hope this was a good conversation. And I, I want to have more of these conversations in the future. Now that I have glasses, I can give off an aura as if I know what I'm talking about, despite the fact I'm incredibly retarded. So... We're going to lean into that and see how that goes. I have to censor so much at the end of the segment. I'm so sorry.